don't want to lose this one. There was just too many fish showing to the left to not get a bite, if I'm honest, at this time of the year, because it is silly season. Although I've fished this lake quite a few times in the winter, I've not really had many big fish out of here at all. I think my biggest is about 25, 26 pound, something like that, but there's so many good ones in here. So obviously at the moment, it's nice to get a bite, but I'm always thinking, is it, is it a good one? There's some absolute bangers in this lake as well. There's a fish in here called Dyson's, which is, I think it's almost fully scaled. I don't think it's that fish, looking at it, it doesn't look that big, but that's why people fish Ladywood because some of the carp for the north are absolutely beautiful. It offers that little bit of a, a difference which is always going to be a, a big pull in Yorkshire. It's not a big fish this one, really. I can see it now. In she goes, Rich. Well, we ain't blank, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice fish as well, mate, that. Uh, lovely. Awesome. Well, I was playing that fish and it's obviously taking the other rod out to the left. And when I've got it in the net, just sorting a few bits and pieces out here and another fish has just crashed just off the bush in the corner there, which is only, well, a couple of rod lengths out. So. Before we get this fish out, what I'm gonna do is just redo my left hand rod, stick it on a slack line again, try and keep everything as discreet as we possibly can, and see if we can get another fish, because it definitely feels good for another one. It's too shallow to go right into that tree. Maybe, maybe it goes in into a deep area in that, under that tree. Sometimes you have to chuck and chance. <laughs> That's what carp vision's about. That's two rods back on the spot. Just one more to do, but that one's obviously got a fish attached to it. So let's get that one hooked, photographed, and then we'll redo the other one. Well, there you go, that's the first one. That's proper put a smile on my face. There's probably hundreds of carp in Ladywood that's bigger than this one, but I don't care. I am happy that we've made a little film, which has driven up from Oxford to Yorkshire, and this is the finishing touches. We could get a bigger one, but for now, it'll definitely do. Right, let's get him back. Lovely clean fish, anyway. Uh, but at a guess I reckon he's about 18, 19 pounds, something like that. Not bad, I'm happy anyway. Ooh, nice. Right, that's dropped nicely. Nice and quietly as well, still fishing the area. I've just dropped it down with a donk, something I always do when I'm using a bait boat. Always feel for the drop. It's no different to the kind of drop that you do when you're casting out, just to make sure it's nice and hard and it's gone down nice and clear there. So all I've got to do is just bring this boat back nice and quietly. And then gently, just set the rod up. And as I said before, I'm just slack lining. Don't want to use too tight a bowstring have a line across there because there are fish coming in close so uh, as we saw with that take I think when you're fishing in that kind of way in, in that kind of depth as soon as that fish picks the hook bait up it's, it's, you're going to get some kind of registration you don't need to worry about missed bites with slack lining when you're close in so let's get the rod set
I, I find it interesting fishing different lakes. I always have done because it's variety is the spice of life, as they say. And you can fish one water and you can be top rod on that water, keep catching the same old carp over and over again. But really, is that as is that going to make you a, an all round better carp angler? I don't think so. And you know, when I was a young kid with Rob doing the day ticket series that we used to do, we always said it. The more lakes we fish, the better anglers will become. Last time I did a tally on it, I've caught carp from over 400 waters. And even this year now, we're in April, I've, I've got four new lakes that I've caught from this year. And generally most years, I'll stack up about 10 different lakes that I've never been to before and, and catch carp from them. So, and I'm learning all the time. The older I've got, the more I can drink fucking boiling hot water. I could drink that now out of that kettle. A cold cup of coffee, I can't, I just don't like it has to be roasting hot, so a nice hot cup. Don't tell me I look weathered. That's what the missus tells me all the time. Yeah, I don't know whether I should be putting the rods long tonight, mate, because that's the spot out there. That's the, the going area. But they've been coming in close during this sun. So, uh, decisions, decisions. The reason I fish as much as I do is because I absolutely love it. I'm totally addicted to it. You know, that's the only reason. It's yes, it's my job, but I think I've, the reason it's my job is because people in the trade realise that I'm a bit of a moron when it comes to wanting to be out on the bank all the time. Because there's a lot of guys who say that they would love to go fishing all the time, but it does burn people out. But for some reason, it doesn't seem to have that effect on me. So, like I said before, I'm gonna. We do this left hand rod, drop it a little bit deeper, just off the corner of that kind of point area where I know there's definitely been carp today. It's not far away and early now. God, I love bait boats. That's so easy to put your bait out. So convenient. I bet you didn't think I had one of these, did you? A bait boat user with a marker float rod. What do you reckon, Rich? <laughs> I still use one of these. I like bait boats. Absolutely no problem with them whatsoever. I use echo sounders, use the lot, use any kind of technology that's needed to help me catch fish, but the traditional ways are definitely better in some circumstances. And what I know out there is that there's a gravelly hump out there and I can't identify that from a bait boat, no, no matter how good your echo sounder is. So the marker floats out, gonna cast it out, find the area that I wanna fish to because it's gone cooler now and I think the fish have gone off this light marginal shelf. They're pushing out a little bit further. It's cooling off tonight. The guy in the next door swims caught one in 17 foot of water, so I need to get a rod in that kind of depth for tonight. So let's get this put out there, see if we can find it. That is mega. That is really gravelly there. I don't want to lose this one. The reason I fish as much as I do is because I absolutely love it. I'm totally addicted to it. You know, that's the only reason. In she goes, Rich. It's going to do me a bite and all that is. Fishing lots of different waters makes you a better carp angler. You know, and at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a carp angling consultant. It's what I do for a full-time job. If I only fish one water, then the way I look at it is that I only know that water. So if people can ask me questions about carp fishing, then how can you give a proper honest answer when you only fish one lake? That is proper taking the piss out of me. <laughs> Bite time. I am happy that we've made a little fill, which has driven up from Oxford to Yorkshire. And this is the finishing touches. 